this is a response to Ramio 1983's interesting uh, couple of questions to atheists, although even, uh, I'm not actually an atheist, but I, I'm irreligious, I suppose. Um, which uh, Islamic country would you like to live in, and um, which uh, Muslim country would you uh, like to have power in? Um, for me, the first question is the most interesting. Um, for me, I've, I've been to several Muslim countries, uh, half a dozen of them, and I'm fairly familiar with uh, Islamic communities worldwide. And the one that has actually fascinated me the most is Indonesia. Uh, in particular, Java. The Javanese are the most num numerous of the Indonesians. Um, the Islam that's practiced there is um, very um, diverse. Uh, there are observant Muslims to the point of uh, wearing Islamic clothing, um, praying five times a day, uh, being strict Muslims. And there are Muslims that are non-observant to the point of complete religious indifference. And they pretty much balance each other out in Javanese society or in Indonesian society in general. Um, and there's any number of variations in between those two polarities. There are um, Muslims, nominal Muslims, people who would say that they're Muslims unhes unhesitatingly, who actually venerate, if, if they don't necessarily worship, the Hindu gods, the old Jap Javanese spirits of the forest. Um, it's often said that the Javanese has a Muslim mind, but a Hindu or animistic soul. And by and large, although whenever you hear about Indonesia in the news, you hear about violence, communal violence, and this sort of thing, but by and large, this sort of synthesis of religious points of view works in Indonesia. When you consider that there's a quarter of a billion of them stretched out over hundreds of islands, thousands of islands, the amazing thing is, is that the country can stay together at all. It has many of the same problems that India does, but like India, that is, um, uh, has a, a, Indi a Hindu majority, but is actually a secular republic, the uh, Indonesians say the same thing. We, have, uh, we are a secular republic and a democracy, but uh, we just happen to have a Muslim ma majority. And... Um, they're generally the picture of other faiths is fairly tolerant. Again, there are exceptions to this, and they always make it into the newspapers, but when you actually see how the people live there, there's something about the tropics that tends to take the harsh edge off any religion, and that's definitely true in, uh, in Java, especially in Java, uh, where I would say probably even the most um, religious Muslims are pretty much at least reconciled to the secular state, and most of them probably are strong supporters of it because they understand what happens when you start mix mixing religion and politics in a diverse country like Indonesia. So I've actually considered retiring there when I retire in 10 or 15 years because I love Southeast Asia, and Indonesia has really seriously put the hook in me. Um, the sheer diversity of the place, the friendliness of the inhabitants, um, the fact that it's a Muslim country that seems to be quite comfortable with change and with the modern world, um, and the fact that it's an open society, it's a democracy, uh, really fascinates me. Um, so yeah, that's the one that I would like to live in, although I've, been, I've got nice things to say about other Muslim countries I've been to, say Turkey um, and uh, Tunisia. I admire these two countries as well. Um, actually, two countries with fairly similar political traditions. In fact, um, Tunisia's post-war development, post-independence development, is modeled largely on Turkey's experience. As for the Islamic country, I would like to be like to have power in. <laughs> um, well, I don't like having power, to be perfectly honest. But I, um, the one that I think should have that that would be best for at least somebody to have power in would be Pakistan. Pakistan needs a government. Pakistan needs a government that actually functions. Um, any government, if you ask me, would be better than the one that they have now or the governing system that they have now, although I suppose uh, the Taliban um, might not be a good idea or, or a religious government that's too fanatical might be a very bad idea. Uh, but by the same token, a military dictatorship of the secular variety might not be very good either but a strong government that's able to assert its authority throughout the entire country, save along the lines of India's government, um, would definitely be an improvement over what they've got now, because what they've got now is chaos, anarchy, and violence. And again, the people that are suffering the most of this, uh, as a result of this, are the Pakistanis themselves, although unfortunately the, the, this 
illness that Pakistan has is contagious. It does spread out into neighboring areas. Uh, as far as the West, India is always being subjected to various um, splinter groups that are not really part of the Pakistani mainstream, but pack of the, part of the Pakistani uh, malaise. Uh, but a lot of other countries get sort of affected by the chaos in Pakistan. So, yeah, I guess Pakistan would be the one that needs a government. So that's my answer to the two questions, um, and uh, I, uh, I appreciate the fact that Rameo1983 has actually asked these questions. I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, thinking about the first one, especially. Thank you.